previously on the Embracing the Journey podcast. But let's talk about <laughs> the international model. You know, he pulled me aside and he's like, mm, he says, you look a little uh, larger on camera. He said, like, slim down and tone up. And then all of a sudden you find yourself being pushed and pulled all different directions. But you always got to circle back. Mm hmm to who your authentic self is because I had most of my ex success when I was like my authentic self. For sure. So welcome back to Embracing the Journey podcast. Being a model gets you access to certain things. Mm -hmm. Natalie, you know what I want to ask. <laughs> What 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 was dating like? Mm. I mean, we can jump on the internet and probably try to figure it out, but we want to hear it from the source. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. I love tea. Literal tea. <laughs> Literal I love tea. tea too. Um, well, what do you want to know? So, do models date models? Do models date actors? Do models date athletes? What what has been your experience? <laughs> I think that. Um, when you're in kind of the modeling world, it's so enmeshed in the world of professional athletes and everything like that. Like, luckily, because my dad was a professional athlete and his career had me surrounded by professional athletes all the time, like, I'm never a starstruck person. I simply believe that a lot of these people have just like a very strong work ethic mm -hmm. and um you know was luck mixed in with timing too i just view them as very like strong you know people that are so committed to their crafts i have a lot of respect so i've never particularly like seeked out dating people that were uh you know famous but you're uh, you're around that you know like you're the average of the what five people that you hang out with so doing modeling doing acting you're around a lot of of those kind of people so yeah i dated oh there yeah. we go <laughs> <laughs> there we go oh, so man. so so you you dated an athlete mm -hmm. or an actor which an athlete yeah okay was it a healthy experience was it an educational experience what what did we get from that? Right. So I feel so far removed from it now because it happened when I was like just turned 20 and it was very, it was like a three year thing. I did okay. get married. Um, he Wait, was, hold on. We, we, Natalie, we can't skate past that. <laughs> can't skate past You it. want all the tea. You don't want just oh, a little you, bit of tea. You're like, give me all the tea. I want to drown in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get my feet wet. I want to drown in okay. it. Okay. Okay. So, so you got married at what age? I was 22. 22. So yeah. so fairly young. Very young. Yeah, very young. You meet this guy mm -hmm. um, as a professional athlete. Like mm -hmm. It's like cliche, right? Like the cheerleader dates the, the star quarterback. <laughs> so there's that vibe going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed that when I said, was it a healthy experience? You kind of nodded. What, is, what does that mean? So it really wasn't. But when I look at it, I think about the breakthrough I had, it was a very toxic relationship. Um, In what aspect? He had a really um, strong personality that was um, it, very intense. He was very driven. That's why he did so well with his career was he, he had that kind of energy about him. But um, unfortunately, there was a lot of like control, deception, mm. lying, um, a lot of... Uh, very unhealthy things and he brought out the worst in me too um so i you know it takes two to tango and like i just felt like i was constantly being criticized and um disrespected and so it was like a uh, knight in shining armor at first and then it was just sheer um mayhem and i had to hide it from everyone because i didn't want people knowing um, it's so difficult because when you have a public relationship, um, you know, people kind of have this perception of like him and then this perception of me and, you know, um, was it a cultural thing? Not, I mean, not really because we both went to the same school. He was in my brother's year, like six years above okay. my brother. 
And um, it, we didn't even start dating until after that. Um, and he only stayed in touch when he kind of blew up in Belgium. He only stayed in touch with a few people from high school because he, you know, it's just like people have different motives, you know. Of course. And he stayed in touch with my brother and he'd always, you know, ask, oh, can I say, say hi to your sister, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of how we So he always had a crush on you. I don't know. It's just I us. think he had a crush on a lot of people's sisters. Oh. oh. <laughs> he was, you know, here's the thing. When you date a sociopathic narcissist. Now, now the tea's coming. <laughs> when you date a person that has a severe problem like that, looking back, you can only feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. But I also see it as it was such an essential part of like my development of understanding the capabilities of what some humans can do. Right. You know, did, did he push you? You said he brought out the worst in you, right? Yeah, he did. Did he push you? Because bringing out the worst in someone can just mean you, you may act out of character. If you're yeah. not a big, you know, swear, you may swear, but did right. he push you to things that you've never thought you were capable of doing? I mean, I think I slipped into this dark, like, depression being with him. I was, you know, very thin. I was totally retracting from my loved ones. I was isolating. And I was very upset all the time, very insecure and paranoid, honestly, because it was like I was living in this, like, um, like a prison it was a very dark time. Um, it was just dark. I look back and I didn't have like the sparkle in my eye. Mm. I didn't have a lot of energy, you know. It was it was very damaging, but I did so much therapy after it that I came out stronger than ever and I did everything that I wanted to do because this person was literally like, You can't do this. You're not tall enough to to be a model. You're who do you you want to be an actress? Who do you think you're Meryl Streep? Like so many things to just like really, really put me down like entirely. And the ending of that was like the best thing ever because all of a sudden it was like I could just really, really be what I always knew I was. It's just at that time. Wait, we got to hear it. Yeah. What uh, What did you know you could be? I knew I could be a successful entrepreneur. Love I knew it. I could work in the entertainment industry and actually book big projects. Right. I knew I could be in national um, commercials. I knew I could be on billboards. I knew I could do all those things and own my own successful business. And I was like just waiting for that moment, you know? So do you feel, do you feel that this relationship at 22 yeah. <clears throat> was meant to happen the way that it happened for you to get where you are? In my experience with um, a lot of people that have had success is yeah. they do it, they do it in, a, in spite mm. of, a, of a situation that's kind of yeah. suppressed them. So what is that? What was that like for you? So I had no spite when mm. I did all the things I did because I was actually doing a lot of that when I met him. I was modeling and he was the one that hacked into my email and sent an email d basically pulling out for my contract. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out. Yeah, I know. That's illegal. How? I know. Well, not only is it illegal, but how are you a professional athlete? Yeah. Hopefully you're successful as the athlete, but still managing to have time to micromanage <laughs> someone else's life. How yeah. does that work? I think I think he was just very insecure. Um, but yeah, they uh and the and my agents were like called me. They said, "Are you sh are you okay?" I'm like, "About what?" They're like, "Well, we, you know, you just got an email." I was like, what? Yeah. He terminated my contract without my authorization via my email under my name, along with a lot of other things. So I was already doing, like I was already being Natalie Sifferman, mm. like my own person. I was modeling. I was doing like a bunch of, um, yeah, commercials too. And, um, and you know, he, he just was like, no. 
we're not doing this. It needs to be all about him. Natalie, we don't like that. I know. We're going to cut to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Are you in need of digital content for your business? Family portraits of the holidays? Videos and photos for your social media? Frederick Films provides a plethora of digital marketing services that can push your brand or business forward. Visit frederickfilms.com to learn more. Welcome back to Embracing the Journey podcast. Okay, so we're here now. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're just in it. We're in I it. Just, like, we are waist deep. I was deep. like, you know, I don't know if I want to talk about that, but it's like, whatever. Let's we're talk here. about it. Because well, I, I feel like, I feel like, so so hear me out. Yeah. At 22 years old, 20 years old, 21 years old, is it, I hate to use the word fantasy, mm-hmm. <clears throat> to be not only the model, but also be with a professional athlete mm. until you realize how hard it is to be with a professional athlete. Yeah. So for people out there, right? Male, female, whatever the situation may be, I feel like you've shined light on a bunch of things, right? Like as a professional athlete myself, yeah. there there's edge to me. Of course. Where, and that's the there's beauty in it. There's edge to my dad. That's why I like I feel very comfortable mm-hmm. around those kind of personalities because I have a lot of that fire in myself so I can understand you know, and but sometimes as a professional athlete, you got a lot of people that are like praising you and yep. giving you all kinds of stuff. And then sometimes if you kind of get and if you lose sight of like, you know, being grounded, you can kind of start to transform into something that's um, not not good. Right. I noticed for me. Everybody in my camp, and when I say my camp, it just mm-hmm. meant my immediate group, like agent, manager, you know, whatever the situation was, coaching, coaches, they required me to be perfect. Yeah. Right? Every person in my space that was of any substance to me required me to be perfect. So when I got in relationships with people, yeah, I held them to the same standards that I was held at. Mm. Not that I'm condoning anything that your your ex husband yeah. had done. Not that I would ever hack into your email. Like I, if I'm <laughs> if I'm wanting to be the best athlete in the world, I don't have time for it, I right? No, for real. But I think, and I can just speak on my behalf. Mm. As I was a professional athlete for four, for 13 years, mm-hmm. 26 seasons, Natalie. Natalie, yeah, 26 <laughs> seasons. And that was the most insecure I have ever been in my entire life. Mm. And out of those 13 years, 10 of them, I was ranked in the top five in the world. And that was the most insecure I have ever felt in my entire life. So although I am, you know, sitting across from you being like, oh, I would never do that. I can understand and see where he may have been coming from because he's not in control of anything else. And what he is in control of may be just right in the under the same roof that he's living in. Yeah. Um, going off of the insecurity, right? Like, yeah. what if you got too big and you left me? Or what if you got too big and and you outshined me? Mm. These are all things that a flawed perspective of a hurt person is consciously thinking about. Yeah. And you know, we just met, right? Mm. You don't strike me as a pushover. No, I'm not. I'm very sweet. Like, I'm very warm and sweet. But those are the ones you got to be careful with. (laughs) But I'm also like, oh, my friends. Yeah. If my friends would describe me, they would describe me as um, very passionate and um, very, like, strong. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. So so we're segueing. We're we're going somewhere else with it. So you own an art gallery. Yeah. Right. And you're an entrepreneur and all this, mm-hmm. all this stuff in the art space. Yes. So when you're, when you said that your friends are describing you as strong and, and things like that, it, it, it has to make sense. Yes. Right. Yeah. One thing that I've really wanted to dive into and I just haven't had the right person. And yeah. it seems like you just walked in the door just with this aura of like, I'm the right person. <laughs> so we're going to have to do it. What's it like being a woman in business? In 2023. So, um, next week on the Embracing the Journey podcast. 
being a female in business to me is like the ultimate demonstration of like we are empowered because we can do this. I need to 100% commit to my art form and I created a business plan of how I was going to take this basically what was a side hustle, a hobby, and make it into a full-blown career. Wow. Yeah. 